cheating. It's an absolute cheating. Because you can say anything about God, but if you say, well, that part that I have said can be verified, then you can say, now I am. You can say anything about a particular object, and if you can verify it, you say, that is the truth. Then you have understood that that matter in that particular content, but it's still not the truth. So to the question, how to understand the world, the logical answer is I can't. But if you succeed, if you succeed, ironically, you have total failed. If you say, I understand God, and you create a concept of God, and then you say, this is intuitively, or by this month, or the others, is verifiable and truth, then you have not proven God. You have only proven your statement. The, the attempt to rationalize God is, is not to understand God. It's to create some other thing called the concept of God. And, and the same thing applies to mankind, the concept of mankind, or nature. We just have a concept of nature that we verify. So, to the question, what is Allah, who is Allah, or where is Allah, that the Muslims quite, as part of the Tawheed, they say, we cannot answer the, the philosophers to and, and in the attempt of trying to answer these questions in a manner that is uh, reasonable, and that's where the methodology comes in, is where the failure comes in. So in a way, if they fail, it's fine, but when they succeed, when philosophy is successful, is where the bigger failure comes in. Uh, the Greeks, uh, before uh, the event of philosophy, were philosophers? And who is the beginning of it? And what makes the difference? Well, uh, the beginning comes from Socrates, although we don't know about Socrates, we only know from Plato about Socrates. So in a way, one can say Plato is a first philosopher. Um, but was there a philosophy before? No, there was no philosophers before. What there were were poets. So when you look at the writing of Parmenides or Heraclitus, you don't find philosophy. What you find is poetry. Is defining the world not by logical statements, but by metaphors. Is by try to, trying to to reach mirroring one thing against the other. Poetry is still incapable of defining the truth, but is more likely to leave the door closed, to give the, the matter hidden, to suggest rather than define. Uh, and uh, by suggesting, there is still a going on, but in defining, there is a lock up of the situation. And uh, the critical word, and uh, perhaps one word to be blamed for such a big fuss, sounds like an exaggeration, but this is a very important word, is the word truth. And uh, it all comes to a mere definition of the word truth, from being called uh, aletheia in the, the classical Greek. This word changes its meaning. Originally, it means undisclosure. So, uh, something like uh, is covered to uncover, unveiling, one can say. So, when you refer to the truth as unveiling, you are not defining the truth. That you are only defining the process by which you become aware of something, which is unveiling, is the removing of the, of the base. This is something we perfectly understand. Now, what happens now is that in a succession of events, philosophy is going to solidify these aletheia through the intervention first of, of, the, 
of the Greeks and then later on by the people who followed into the, what we understand today as the truth, as the scientific truth, we would say. And uh, so if you go back to this uh, particular moment, you know, what the Greeks said is almost something innocent. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't have the, the appearance of what yet was going to come. It was only the beginning of the turning into a wrong direction. And therefore, it's the most important point. Jet is the most subtle, but jet is the most important. And, and the key is the fascination with the words. Here, what is important is, what is looked upon is no longer the reality itself. It seems unperceivable. You know, it's too vast, too crazy. Into the logos. So it's a way of verifying logos. Logos means statement. A pronouncement, a sentence in Greek. So is is the fascination for the sentences, for the fascination for language, and, and to prove language. And that that process is where they now say that is the truth. And this is where everything starts moving in the wrong way. And from uh, from the original Aletheia we have now the philosophical truth, which is then translated into veritas in the Latin and the, and the Latin philosophers uh, that follow the Greeks. And then uh, that becomes in the West uh, la vérité for Descartes, and then you have uh, Kant and Schopenhauer and Nietzsche and uh, Heidegger at the end coming and saying the whole thing is wrong. So, is that this matter of philosophy starts with Plato and ends, at least intellectually, for those who have become aware with uh, Nietzsche. Um, do we still have philosophy? Yes, we have. In everything that we do, absolutely without any question. So, is, is philosophy dead? Only intellectually, that's only in as much as we become aware of it. In terms of uh, its practice, it's still an instant, total, like in Abel. So, uh, what the Greeks do is something very tiny, and yet it has an enormous consequences. <coughs> is the fascination with logos and the creation of logic. So, logic is at the center of everything that uh, we call today scientific. Uh, so, we speak about anthropology and biology and Ology, everything which is ology comes from the logos of the Greeks. And it's a statement of uh, how this way of thinking relates to this primate event, primary event. What, uh, uh, by, the, by the 12th century, <coughs> um, there were some philosophers still around, but it was a, a moderate movement. Uh, and uh, it was part of the intellectual discussion of the East, and they were much more aware of the of these matters in the East than they were in the West. In fact, uh, what starts in Alandalus is is a is appraisal of the Greeks, the translation of these works into Arabic language, which they have never done. They have spoken about, but they have never bothered it. And what happened in Alandalus is that they say this is interesting. Let's look into it. And they go and they translate later. And who does it? In the first. And uh, uh, so what? What they do is that they, they say, well, uh, taking in the way that even Sina has said that now we have a way of thinking which we can comprehend the world is you have gone wrong. Uh, this way of thinking is useful only in as much as it is understood its limitations. And, but if the limitations are not understood, then this way of thinking is dangerous, becomes dangerous. Becomes dangerous in as smart as any way of kufur becomes dangerous. So in as much as you start worshiping a stone, uh, the moment you say the truth is something, 
the Muslims will pull their hair and they say, Kufur out of the question. All right? But when we say, when the truth now has been defined as whatever the majority of the people say, called democracy, and we just pull that and we Islamize it, then what are we doing? Okay? We have rationalized the truth. So, in other words, either well, there was a truth, the Quran part is part of the reality of the 7th century Arabia. You see, and then I can say, well, that statement is true, right or wrong? And anthropologically define the society of Medina and to say, what I'm saying is right or wrong is factually totally right. But it's totally wrong because you miss the most important thing. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi came there with the Quran. And uh, by his prophethood, it brought to us a light that it had never reached that high in the history of mankind. And uh, to define Medina in any other way, missing that information, in any other conceivable way, that you are not reflecting the truth about Medina. Even though whatever statements that you can bring in, they may be factually right. Okay? Like for example, when the ants of my kitchen drown in my glass of water, there must be some rationale for these suicidal tendencies. I'm sure, I'm sure that uh, when they do it, they have a good reason. And yet, it's totally wrong. Right. Well, if we commit suicide on a daily basis, in the acceptance of democracy. If you want to find out why democracy is wrong, and the people say, oh, did Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that democracy is wrong? No, he didn't say democracy is wrong, neither did he say paper money is wrong. It never occurred to him that the people could be so thick to arrive to this situation. Never mind. Did he give us the tools to understand what this thing is and what is not? Are we totally perplexed? When this thing comes to us, it's something totally new. Are we totally incapable of adapting a way of thinking in order to articulate, to ponder, to wait, to measure, to understand this statement, these policies? Of course we do. And in fact, if you want something very, very, very close, this is it. It's all here. This book owes to be translated. I think there is an, uh, a French version.